Hi, I'm Micah with Efficient Small Business, and today I'm going to show you how to make a brochure in Google Docs, uh, and more specifically, Google Slides. So we're going to start off, uh, I'll actually show you something that I've already made, and here is a, it's just a rack card, so this doesn't open up, it's not a trifold or bifold or anything, you have one side, the other side, just so you can see kind of what you can do with it, and it's really easy to uh, overlay different elements, pictures, text boxes, uh, mess with the colors, do all sorts of different stuff. Um, so let's get into it. And I'm actually going to show you how to do a trifold. So when we first open a Google slide, here's what you're going to see. Um, you usually won't actually see the guides here. Uh, you may or may not. But we're going to come in here and we're going to clean this up because we don't need any of that. So close out and let's turn off speaker notes. And the first thing we need to do is to format our page so it's the right dimensions, it's the correct dimensions that we're going to need for a trifold because uh, this is just the custom 16 by 9. Uh, in order to find the right dimensions, I mean, generally speaking if you're printing this off uh, on your own, you're just going to use 8.5 by 11 paper. Uh, however, you, if you're using a service, you're going to need to know whatever they're using, which again, they usually use 8.5 by 11. Um, but today, uh, I went to Vistaprint and we're going to pull up their dimensions just to get an exact idea because if you're going to send it off to be printed somewhere else, uh, you don't necessarily want the uh, you want they're going to want what's called bleed, and that's just it. when they print it out and they cut it. If the picture you send them isn't uh, all the way to the edge or a little bit past the edge of the paper, it's going to give you white lines. So that's why we go here and their specifications. We're going to go to product specs, uh, and the bifold and the trifold actually are the exact same for the eight and a half by eleven. And you'll see here full bleed size. Uh, so it's just bigger than a piece of paper, and that's simply the document size. They're actually gonna they're gonna trim it down to just under that. So it's gonna be just smaller than a piece of paper. So the full bleed size needs to be just larger than that. So let's do 11.1 times by 8.62. So to do that, go to our slides, file, page setup, and we're gonna. Go to custom 11.1 by 8.62. I'm going to 8.625 because it rounds down. So if I do two like this, um, I'll show you real quick because you have to back out of it. We'll do 8.61. So we're going to 8.625 just because for precision's sake, uh, even though I'm not very precise most of the time. Um, now we need the trim size. So when we send the file, they're going to want to see a file that has a page size this big, and then they're going to cut it down to this. So let's give our border there. Um, and what we need to do, because we're, we're just going to use guides here. So view, guides, edit guides, and you'll see there's one here already because it just does the center of the document, but we're going to change that. So we need something at the top, and the normal bleed margin is three millimeters or 0.12 inches. Again, I'm going to do two five here. So it thing. Let's see here. So this is going to give us our far left. And if you want to know the far right, you can either take the 11.1 .1 and uh, subtract 0.12, or you can just look here and it's going to tell you that's 10.98. So what they're going to cut it to. So there's that. It's going to round down anyway, which is fine because that's actually 0.12 less. Uh, now we need our horizontal. So again, we can do 0.125 because it's going to be the bottom or at the top, sorry. And then the other one is 8.5 because that's 0.12 less than 0.2. There you go, math. All right, uh, now we have our dimensions and we have the actual outline. So when we send this to get printed, uh, it is going to 
actually cut right here. Now, if you're printing this off of your own printer, just do eight and a half by 11. Uh, your printer's probably not gonna be able to, to deal with the bleed area and it's just gonna shrink the whole image down. Uh, so here we go. And the next thing we need is to have the lines to separate the different sections for our trifold. Uh, and we could do exact like thirds, uh, but then when you go to actually fold it, if you cut, if you fold out the line, it's always, it's never going to fit quite right. So one side has to be slightly shorter, or I guess rather one side has to be slightly longer than the other two is how this is going to work out. So I have, have a couple dimensions here. You may, you may need to find out exactly how to do it yourself. Uh, cause if this print, I don't know if they fold it for you. I'm not sure how that works. I've never actually ordered a trifold or bifold from them. All right, so we're gonna go back to guides. And now we need to add the line. So we only need vertical for this bit. And we're gonna say 3.625 and 7.313. And I found these numbers by searching them online, so just numbers. Uh, so here you go. Here's where the line, here's where the paper should actually be folded. And now I'm going to add some bleed areas around that because we don't want to put all of our pictures right up to this because if you use text over this or if you get text too close to that, you're not going to be able to read it. So you need a bleed area, a bleed margin there. All right. And the bleed margin for that we're going to do... 3.53, 3 3.77, 3 2, 1, let's just do 3 7, 2, 1, and 3.4, I think that's going to round down, yeah. And voila, except for one of these, that's not gonna work out. Let's have a look at that. Looks like it's this one right here. Because that's not how you do math. <laughs> so 3162, 3.74. It's a little bit better. Looks like it's still a tiny bit off, but you'll figure it out on your own. Okay, so uh, the other consideration here is let's say we're doing two pages because you're going to do two pages. Oops. Um, you the margins actually need to be uh, inverse here, so you need to do them backwards. So you have two options here, uh, or two good options. Maybe there's another one that I don't know about. You can. I'll show you that in a second. Um, you can do one page all at one time and then change the margins, then do the second page with the new margins, which may seem like a bit of a hassle, especially if you want to go back and forth. Maybe that's not the best option for you. Uh, otherwise, you can create a line here right over the top of this one and know that this is your line. So you do this, make another line. Let's say we put one over here. And then we change the margins, and then we do something down here so we know that they're going to be different on each page. Uh, the only issue with this, so I can now remove can move these guides, you'll still see the lines here. There's a couple issues with this. The first one is that the, well, is the alignment, trying to get the perfectly straight line. So let me show you here. If we go to Format Options, you will see the width is 0 0.01, which means it's not actually straight, which isn't a big deal. You might be able to work around that. Uh, Otherwise, you can you, you can't just type zero in here. If you try, it's going to tell you no, and it's going to go back to whatever it was. However, let's see here. Doesn't like me for that. Okay, I don't know why it just went blank on me, but here we go. There's a good example. You can get it straight if you you just have to find out the right spot. You can't type it in there, but you can make it do it. It complains, 
but it's done. And then you can just copy and paste this wherever you want. Issue number two with this way is when you are dragging and dropping elements, let's say we have a shape up here, put a shape here. If I'm moving this around, oftentimes like I'll click and drag to get this and move around. If you click and drag this, this is part of an element now. So my line might move. I don't like that. So I'm not gonna do that route. We're gonna stick with the guides and I'm not even gonna worry about the second page because I'm just showing you how to do this for the time being, but those are issues you may run into. Uh, the other thing is you won't, if you use that other method of creating a line, is you're not going to have these guides. So see how there's a red line there? If I move over here, um, let's see if it'll do it. Oh, it's not going to give me the middle line over here. Occasionally, it'll, it'll know. So like if I put it here, it knows I'm right at the line, uh, and it will help be precise with all of these. Again, it's it will kind of do that. It's just not without its drawbacks. All right, moving on. The next thing we need to look at here is, uh, you, you kind of saw how I did the shapes. You know, if you want to add shapes, this is a good way to liven up any document, any brochure. It's just basic geometric shapes, and then you make them look good. So we pulled a square here, and this is generic. Let's get rid of the borders. I almost always do that. And then we'll throw it down at the bottom. So if we were going to print this, it needs to be outside of the bleed here. Otherwise, when it gets printed, it may look like that. So you're going to get partial lines and nobody wants that. It looks bad. Now what we can do with this is let's say we want to color it. Uh, a lot of things, it, you know, we could, we don't want to stay too bland here. You could do just a solid color or however you want to do that. And then just layer shapes over the top. Let's say we do this, let's do another shape. Uh, but this time, I want this. We'll, we'll, we will have the border here. Yeah, let's do that. Make some, make some squares. You can do things like this. Um, but it's just kind of boring and not interesting at all. So to liven that up, we use gradient here. And you can pull from one of the things up here. Or we're going to get a little more interesting than that. Going to add a stop point here. Let's make this top one transparent. Second one, let's go with let's go with red. White red berry three, everybody's favorite, right? Okay, great. And now we have something that's a little more interesting to look at. It's not quite so bland. Uh, I can put this over the top of it. It looks okay. Um, and actually, I'm going to do. Let's, let's make this look interesting here. Mix and match shapes. Black shapes. Great. Uh, and here's a thing. So, using Google Slides versus any other program, which is more made for this, like trying to get large chunks of moving parts can be frustrating, especially like if I want to move just these, but if they overlap this and I am now selecting everything. So we have a little function here. If you select what you want, right click and hit group. So now I click out, I can come over here and I can just move all of it at one time without, you know, it getting weird on me. Put it over, let's put it down here. And it looks fine here, but what if we want it in the background? So we'll pull this forward, we get stuff like that. Uh, and what I just did there, in case anybody wants to know, is if you're on a Mac, uh, you hit control up and then the up or down arrow moves the, I, the, the shape or whatever the item is that you have selected and moves it to the foreground or the background, depending. You can also come up here, I think, it's possible to do it elsewhere. Arrange. Okay. Order. Yep. And then you can hit bring forward, bring, bring to front, bring forward, send all the way to the back, bring all the way to the front, you know, whatever. In this case, it's all the way to the back. So those are just our two options. Um, I'm just doing it with a shortcut. So there we go. Uh, so in instances like this, you might want to get a little more interesting. We can come in and you know how we made this one transparent so you can see the top part, but let's make this one 
We're not going to make it transparent because if we make it transparent, it you will have red at the bottom, right? So we're only going to make it partially transparent. So we go through all of this, come down here, make it make it a little transparent. And what's going to be important for us in a moment are these last two letters there, the C and the D. We've got to remember those, C, D. And you'll see why in just a minute. Uh, so here you go. Now you can see all the way through. And it's a little more interesting, more visually interesting anyway. And if we were to bring this, oh, grab the wrong shape. So if, we're, if we brought this down and put it behind, now you'll see it doesn't vanish until it gets all the way to the bottom. All right, so let's, let's copy this real quick and stick this. And I don't want it to be exactly the same. Let's let's check this out. All right, so when you have something selected, you can right click. If it's a picture, you'll actually have the option up here, but as a shape, uh, you don't have the option for just a format button there. Actually, it was, it, it's over here, I forget. Yep, so there, format options, you go there, click it, pulls up this menu. Um, and you have these different options, size, position, text fitting, so on and so forth. Let's go ahead, we'll flip that. So we can bring it up here, make that go away. And now let's make this a different color. So we're gonna go, the wrong thing there. And we're gonna change this, we'll make it orange. Uh, but remember, we made the other one slightly transparent. So let's do the same thing because when you make it transparent, it does change the color, like how you see it a little bit. So remember we had CD over there. We have CD here. Do the same thing again, but this time. All right, let's make sure it's lined up there. And you'll know it's, it's there when you see the red line. So all the way at the right, you can see that red line that pops up. It means I'm right there on the edge. And then I need to do the same thing at the bottom. Sometimes it has a little bit of issue, so you might have to mess around with it just a little bit. Okay, there we go. Move that all the way to the line. And we want to change the color again, because why not? This one we will make green. Don't forget, we made it partially transparent. Let's do the same thing here, just so keeping the same theme going if we have similar uh, visual parts or different items on there. You want it to all just be consistent throughout. Okay, great. So we have something like that. Uh, let's take a look at uh, text boxes. Text boxes, text, yep. Yeah, that's, that's the right way to say that. Uh, actually, no, no, let's do, let's do an image first. So, cause we want, we want to have a fancy image cause right now this is still pretty boring. Uh, by the way, now this is probably gonna look good when we're done, I'm just, messing around a little bit, you'll get the idea. And we'll pull this up. And if nobody's familiar with the website Pexels, uh, it provides royalty-free uh, photos to users, and it's amazing. So you should go check them out. It's Pexels, P-E-X-E-L-S. I'm not endorsed by them. I just really like what they do. <laughs> and you should check them out because, yes. OK. There we go. Well, what I just did there uh, is I double click on the image, which allows me to crop it. The other way to do that would be to come up here uh, to this and click the crop button as well. I just did a quick shortcut there. We're gonna hit enter. That's good. Now we're gonna send this back. So again, my if you're on a app PC, it might be Control Shift down, but Apple it's Apple Shift down. Send it all the way to the back, and we could even so let's go to our format options. Check this out. You can make this transparent also, and you can see kind of what it does. So if I now put it, bring it forward, if this was the top image, you can still sort of see the colors, you can sort of see the squares. You get a feel for what that does, mess around with the brightness, so on and so forth, get, get crazy with it. Uh, now the next thing, text boxes. Let's, let's check this out. So click text, put it anywhere. Uh, and we want some big text here. I like, there's one I like. 
Ah, Oswald, top, top. Great. We'll put in uh, Acme Inc., everybody's favorite company. And let's make it look a little different. Throw, throw that there. Great. And we'll give them a tagline. Always sending you stuff. That's what we do. We send things. It could be anything. Maybe we don't want that same background. Maybe we want. Actually, let's make it transparent. And we're going to. We like that. But see, maybe it's maybe it's not quite as easy to read as it could be. Let's hit enter there. So here's where some of the different elements come in. Let's let's grab a shape. Do a square. We're gonna put a square over the top of this because we can. Um, and if you mess around with it, you can actually make it the exact same size as the text box that we're using because that's what we're doing here. And let's send it back. So again, that was Apple down arrow um, and you can see how like you can make change the color of the background color of the text itself or you can use a different box and do something like this uh, and maybe we even want to see a little bit of the bricks through this it doesn't have to be like that we can make this box itself transparent first i'm going to get rid of the border come through here and again not all the way transparent but just a little bit and see See, just just a little a hint, uh, and just little things like that are nice to look at. Make things more interesting. This whole document is not interesting to look at. Please don't copy it. It looks bad. <laughs> um, so you, that gives you a good idea of what's going on with that. Another thing you can do. Um, so this allows you to do like interesting visual things. Like you could have this part the way off the screen, have it move over like that, uh, which is kind of interesting to look at. Or let's say you don't want to do that at all, and maybe we have separate text boxes. So let's get rid of always sending you stuff there. We can make this smaller. It doesn't really matter. You can actually make it smaller than that, but it just makes things complicated. So try to always keep your squares as tight as you can, as tight as it will allow you before things get weird. All right, so let's do a new one here. And this one, we want to make sure we go back to this. Yeah, we'll say 14. Was sending you stuff. Okay, and we'll make, we'll center it here. Just some quick formatting stuff. Uh, and you can even do that as well. And instead of putting a square behind it, we can actually change the background color of the text box itself. So here we go, just like that. Now it's actually part of the text box. You don't have to mess with two different elements here anymore. Uh, comes with the pros and cons, like I showed you. If it's a separate element, you can have the box slightly off center, or you can put a lot of different words in front, you know, on top of another box. Uh, you still have the option here of making it slightly transparent. You know, choose, choose however you want to do that. And just you know, mess around with it, play around with it. The other the last thing to point out here, let's let's get rid of this. Um, let's say so this is side A, we side B. Let's say we've gone through, we've changed all our margins, we know it all looks good, but you're printing out from your own printer. So when you do double sided, one side has to be upside down. Uh, but you don't want to design it upside down. That's awful and you don't want to try to mess with things. So if for some reason you find yourself in a position where you have to flip it, go ahead, you can select the whole thing, just like that, hit formatting options up there, size, position, and upside down, just like that. You can also do left and right. So maybe you want to switch it. Um, something to note when you're using the flip, the only reason why it's flipping the entire image is because my selection is the entire image. So if I come over here, and I select this box, for instance, and I hit flip, nothing happens. It's a text box, it's the 
text itself isn't going to flip. It's the box is flipping. You just can't see it. Um, another way to show that would be to use these boxes here. So there you go. That's what it looks like. If it's flipping it, you can do 90 degrees, do whatever you want. Go crazy with it. There we go. And that is how you make a brochure using Google Slides. Uh, if you have, you could do actually do the same thing with Google Drawings, but then you can't do multiple pages. This allows you to do multiple pages. Otherwise, Google Drawings works almost exactly the same way. Uh, has almost all the exact same um, menu options. Not entirely because it's drawings and not slides. Uh, but if you have any questions, uh, feel free to leave them in the comments. Uh, and feel free to like this video and follow me on YouTube. Have a great day, everybody. Bye.